Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown From the Bay this for my the special delivery Spit like this, get my wrist all glittery He was on the verge of making it big in the music business And he seemed to have it all To everyone else, the rapper known as G. Depp had a bright future But he was haunted by his past Hiding a terrible secret his conscience just wouldn't let him forget so he made an incredible decision to take justice into his own hands. Here's ABC's Deborah Roberts for our series, Crime and Punishment. I'm just trying to get by until I die. This is a tale of music, murder, and redemption. If you had it to do over again, knowing that you would go to jail for a long time, would you still confess? I would do it again. I would, you know what I mean? Because... It was, I don't think there was no other way around it except me, me dying. His name is g Depp, short for Ghetto Dependent. Sean Combs even teamed up with him in his music video, Let's Get It. He led a gangster life and glorified it in rhyme. And he paid a great debt for committing a crime, betrayed by the last person anyone would have suspected, himself. So this night we were looking to, to let's get some money, he said. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 rode, I rode the bike over, I rode the bike in the, in the neighborhood for a, like a couple of minutes. Then I just uh, went to, I went towards Park Avenue and I saw a guy standing there. Uh, more like he was smoking a cigarette or something like that. And uh, I, I just uh, approached him. I got off the bike and I approached him. He didn't seem like he saw me, so, you know, I just approached him. And then when I, when I approached him, I asked him where the money was. How he got there is a story in itself. G. Depp born Travell Coleman dropped out of college at 18 in search of a music career. He paid for recording sessions by selling cocaine on the streets of Harlem, New York. He dabbled in drugs. In the fall of 1993, a month before his 19th birthday, he mugged a stranger with a gun. He was standing under the scaffold then on Park Avenue, 114th Street. I was riding my bike. I said, what's it called? Give me the money, man. The guy grabbed the gun, you know, and I pulled the gun back, and that's when I fired. How many times did you fire? Three times. He fled on his bike. As he left home the next morning, police were canvassing the neighborhood. They said, do you know anything about the shooting that occurred yesterday? And I said, nah, that made me think he didn't pass away because they said shooting. A week later, he got rid of the gun. And I went to these real and threw it away. And that was the end of that. Yeah. Full swing, full swings like rock and roll. Coleman stayed quiet about the Harlem shooting, throwing himself into his music. Then, five years later, he caught the eye of Sean Combs. How much were they going to pay him? Well, the record deal was for three, three hundred fifty thousand. You know, it was definitely, you know. The more money than I have ever seen. He had a daughter with a girlfriend. That relationship ended. Then he met Crystal Sutton at a club. They married in 2004 and had twin boys, now nine. He has such a great heart. He's always so giving, so caring. He had fame, fortune, and now a family. And the stain on his past. How much did it eat at you? It seemed like it just wasn't fair for me to, you know, be happy, you know what I'm saying? So I used to curb my happiness, you know, like just, now wait a minute, I'm, I'm smiling too much, I'm laughing too much. He remained haunted by his secret, that shooting in Harlem. 
Whatever happened to that man? Was he dead? I thought about whether or not he had children. He could have been a father. And here I am trying to be a father. Did anybody know that you were hiding from this demon, this thing in your past? I felt like I couldn't really tell anybody because uh, I didn't want them to be involved. Burdened by an unbearable secret, g music career suffered. Sean Combs dropped him from his bad boy label. Probably was a drug. I was just knee deep in trying to, you know, medicate myself. Everything was boiling down. The guilt. To that, yeah. In late 2010, Coleman couldn't bear it anymore. He confessed to a police officer he'd shot a man 17 years before. The police did nothing. Maybe he thought that you were just uh, faking this. Yeah. Incredibly, Coleman later went back to police to confess again. What led you to walk into that police station? I think I was just at a point, you know, where it was like enough is enough. But nobody else knew about it? You could have just kept quiet and dealt with it on your own. The dealing with it was killing me. Coleman's memory of the incident was vague. I didn't realize it was hitting him or anything. I just, because I, I, I didn't see anything, you know, I, I just fired him. But police soon found the cold case of John Hankel, shot during October of 1993 at Park Avenue and 114th Street. And then after a while, you know, after I told him what happened, you know, he said, I just wanted to let you know that the guy died. Suddenly, you're charged in a murder. Did you start to have second thoughts? Nah. Travell Coleman had charged himself with murder. You have to concede that that man probably lived in a jail in his head for, for 18 years. Editor-in-chief of GQ magazine, Jim Nelson, was the jury foreman. The hard parts about this case is that it involves a guy who didn't really need to come forward, who did. I mean, he needed to come forward for his conscience. But, you know, we were wrestling with this as jurors because this man's already gone through hell. And he's done something noble. But he did kill someone. I completely understand that for the people who knew John Henkel, it's a different story. The jury found Coleman guilty of second-degree murder. On May 8, 2012, he was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. The case of Travell Coleman has haunted me. One of your twin sons said shortly after you confessed and were arrested that he said he was going to take money from someone. And he said, if I steal, then I can go to jail and then I can be with daddy. It must have broken your heart. Yeah. So they understand that dad chose yeah. to turn himself in. And they're proud of him. I have one really like tough one <laughs> and then one that yeah he'll he'll cry. Coleman had separated from his wife in 2008 but Crystal says she's standing by him. He said to me that in some ways he feels freer now even though he is locked up. It is a different travel. It's a different travel to me not on drugs. I mean, he feels freer, and that that you can tell when talking to him. Do you think he made the right decision? And whatever decision Travell chooses to make, and I have to stand by him. There are relatives of this victim who can't believe that you confessed. Some of them even say he's an idiot. He should have shut up about it. Now we're dredging this whole thing up again all these years later. A lot of the burden is lifted. You know, I see that that was what I needed to do. In prison, g -Def is still rapping. The only thing I really want to talk about is walking out. Only because everybody else talk about it. I tell them realistically, I doubt it. 15 years is a long time, but I got to be strong. I did a crime. I said the system's insanity. I hope God forgives my calamity. I feel for the victim's family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what's going on. Shit got popular. We back on mob business. This is an NYC story. Y'all meet us uptown in Harlem at James Weldon Johnson Houses. Now, today I'm going to do my absolute best to tell y'all the story about a guy who at one time I considered to have the world at their doorstep. As from the outside looking in, 
It looked like they were living their dream, going on to sign a record deal with one of the world's hottest record labels at the time. And shit, probably going on to have one of the hottest songs released in the year of 2001. But what I couldn't see looking at the TV screen was the demons that he was fighting. Growing up without a mother or father, leaving his grandmother to raise him. He would, what we call, beat the odds. But it would be a long time PCP addiction and a dark secret that would shake his world. And that person that I'm talking about is going to be somebody I'm sure some of y'all are going to be familiar with. It's going to be a guy by the name of Travell Gerald Coleman or GDEP or Ghetto Dependent. And like I said, I'm sure some of you might be familiar with him from the time that he spent that bad boy and what I would consider the heights of the label. Now, GDEP, who I'm sure has always been a street dude, got into the music early in the 1990s. And in 1998, he was brought to the attention of Puffy by another artist on Bad Boy that was known to get in trouble, R.I.P. to Black Rob. Though talented, I would say that he had somewhat of an unorthodox flow. And when reviewing the information and researching him, I try to see where I would put him exactly on the list of Bad Boy artists. And I'm going to go through that at the end of this segment. But he would sign the Bad Boy and he would have somewhat success as he would appear on a few songs from Black Rob's underrated Life Story album. Two years later, he would go on to drop his Child of the Ghetto album to moderate success with the standouts being the Let's Get It remix featuring Puffy, Loon, and a few other Bad Boy artists, as well as the special delivery song that I'm sure most of the people that know him know him for. His time on Bad Boy wouldn't last long as he would be eventually dropped after only releasing that album. When asked about it in an interview, he would go on to say that it most likely had something to do with his inconsistency and his use of drugs at the time. Now, not sure how well known it was at the time, but I remember watching shit like Rap City in the basement and 106 in Park. And with Bad Boy being premier players in a game at that time, I do remember seeing them on a lot of those platforms. And I also remember me, my younger brother, and my cousin laughing. Even though the music was all right, it was just always something about him, like the way he dressed. But more than that, it was something in his eyes. But after finding out what he was holding back, it kind of all made sense. In an interview with The Vibe in 2011, after being asked what kind of drugs he would partake in, she would admit PCP, dust is what everybody calls it, saying that she took him to rehab after rehab. She tried everything and she don't know a lot about drugs because she has no one in her family that dealt with that, but she's tried everything possible. But even while fighting those demons, he still tried to stay active in the music. He would team up with fellow former Bad Boy artist Loon to drop Bad Boy independently in 2007, following that up with his sophomore project, Ghetto Legend, in September of 2010. But it would be three months after dropping that second project under Famous Records, where his life would do a 360. In December of 2010, after two attempts to turn himself in as the gunman in a cold case from October of 1993, Officers at the 25th Precinct would listen. And this would be the time when you would have to ask yourself, did the murder fuel the drug use or did the drug use fuel the murder? But they ain't care to hear about none of that on April 17, 2012, when he would be convicted of second degree murder and sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. With his release date being sometime in 2025, I did see in December of 22, where the family of his victim, a white male by the name of John Henkel, would be an outrage as they saw the prosecutor was trying to push for a release for GDEP, right into a clemency judge that he never seen such remorse in a case. And just thinking about the situation, I want to second and third that motion because I'm just going to say GDEP is a better man than me. As though I'm sure it's tough to live every day with something like that on your conscience. Me personally, I just think I'm going to think about it regardless. And I don't want to have to think about it from jail. 
But I'm definitely looking forward to reading what would y'all do in that situation. I'm still having a rough time about where I'm placing GDEP as far as the bad boy MCs. And I'm having a rough time with the list itself. I saw at one point in time they was going back and forth about it on The Breakfast Club. But I got a soft list. And I'm thinking about going live once I do get it all figured out. But I got Biggie at one. I got Jada and Mace kind of fighting for the second one. I'm still determining who I'm going to put where. Then I got Styles and Black Rob. So that will round off the top five. But just thinking about it, I forgot my guy Shine. So I'm going to have to go back. But y'all give me a few days. Y'all get in the comment box. Drop a thumbs up if that's a live that y'all want to see. And actually get in the comment box and let me know what lives y'all want to see. What y'all want to talk about. Shit got popular. I'm going to be back with more ASAP. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We out of here. It's my business.